G'day punters, welcome to the mailbag. We're going to, um, look, it's been a bit of a long week. we uh, got a fair bit going on getting ready for the bull. Um, Sandown yesterday was one of the lowest experiences I've ever had mentally, just trying to figure out the chaos that was that track as I saw just clods of dirt and my cash just fling up into the air, Peter. And we decided, whilst obviously I'll do the meeting in depth and detail for the... Uh, loyal clients of the mailbag, we're going to focus on the good races at Morfittville on this previous show, because they're interesting, and there's a lot of Victorian sort of runners over there, yeah? Yeah, very deep. As very always, deep. Peter, who's this show powered by, my man? Powered by betfair.com.au, Australia's leading and only betting exchange. Poundingform.com.au, the <laughs> database that powers both of us. I love Pounding Form so yeah. much, eh? I just... Uh, I'll be fucked with it. Well, it means we can actually look at Adelaide races without really knowing anything about Adelaide races and still have... Or can we? This is a good test for punning form and for us. Mm. If we slaughter this meeting, this is the perfect opportunity for some of you little trolley sort of operators to get on there and just give it to us. Or does it go the other way? And do we find you a couple of winners saying outside the box? Just via looking at the punningform.com.au data. Peter, let's get into it. Race Where five. Where are we going to start, bruh? Race five, the queen of the South Stakes. So we start talking about punning form. I start like getting hot. Are you hot? No, you're in a shirt, bruh. Yeah, in my new mailbag t-shirt. <laughs> Woo! Race five. Ooh, fair bit going on here. There goes our speed map, and up comes our synth hole. We're doing the synth hole. Yeah, of course, yep. Synth hold or synth? Synthetic. Synth. Synth hold, bruh. Seabrooks, Lee was good last start. I thought it's sort of ready to win. I love, love the Bears on fire form line. 21 days between um, Barrier 1. Thoughts on yeah. Barrier 1, Peter? That's I thought, I started looking at the race and I was like, this is pretty simple. Well, look, it should be able to lead and dictate, shouldn't it? Really. Doesn't always lead, though. No, but, I mean, that's that's what it comes down to. I, really, outside of Cosmic Award, out wide, there's not a whole heap of pace in this race, is there? I do. I like that Zach Spain sticks. Mm. This will be his third start of this prep. It's the horse is third up. That's actually a really good point. There's going to be a lot of jockeys jumping on the horses that they may not have ridden before, just given the fact that not all the Victorians and Sydney jockeys are going to be flying into Adelaide, so... Might be a few little angles there for. I just think this ones. is a really good setup for uh, you to put the shoulders back and get stuck into one here in um, at Morfordville. There's no winners out of the race, the Benson Fire Race, which is three weeks old. Yep. But each and every horse, every single horse, has improved its punningform.com.au all average benchmark figure, Peter. What that tells me is the race is a really good platform race. Seabrook, that was open against the lads. Yep. Against the fellas. This race is not. This race is not, not, no, no, it's not, Peter. This is a group two fillies and mares. So she's down in grade and back to fillies and mares here. Woo-hoo-hoo! $4.20 is theft, isn't it? I actually didn't mind Vanuatu. Bet until it hurts. <laughs> I'll I'll take you... Well, I mean, we're getting enough market percentage here to be able to play a couple. I think snogging's more than short enough, um, given that Vanuatu actually has last start SP over it. Fidelia, I presume it's going to be settling back this time. Uh, why would you presume? Why? What gives you that confidence? Because it's back in Adelaide. Picking up where we were. Yes. Uh, look, Vanuatu... Drawn pretty soft. Dean Holland, mm, you know, look, I'm not going to get too concerned with jockey changes or anything like that in this race or for the weekend. As I said before, there's a few little issues there, but I enjoyed the well, way... Well, it's a new world we live in, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So, like, yeah, there's a stack of good horses yep. that are losing good Victorian riders that are getting yep. a less of a rider, but it's relevant, I guess, to yep. the... So I'm just hoping that the horse is is ready and good to good to go. Uh, Vanuatu, really good splits from the four to the two. Wasn't suited their last start. I thought it was a really nice return for the horse. Uh, it's got a good second up record at the double figure price. I think it's worth having an investment there. Vanuatu for you, sneaky, sneaky, sneaky Pete. 
35 days between runs doesn't appeal to me, but it's a classic mm. bag setup. He's a mm. he likes to spice them. Race seven pistol. Race six. Yeah, sorry. I thought there was good speed here. Lovely, lovely race. Uh, you could make it. Oh, I could make a case for for a lot of these. Sizzle fly mm. Ghana. I think excess funds is now out. Uh, even Tenley, little contra Z long, free of debt, and even Rocco de Casabarena. Yeah. But I then go and look at the market, which we've got up on your screen there, punters. Broadway and fourth is sixteen dollars, eighteen dollars at one joint. That's a big price. What am I missing? I don't know. Recorded some really good splits there last start on the way home. Uh, has performed in the wet before. Figures have been okay. Results probably a little bit questionable, but the figures are still there. But the last 200 last start was slashing. It's huge. Yeah. Do you like anything else in the race? I thought it was pretty even. There's lots of angles there. I found it interesting that both Chilong and Rocker Baskarina are both getting blinkers for the first time here. Yeah, I, I wasn't I'll sure if that was that. a positive or a negative yeah. for Zelong because it's it's the horse with the biggest figure in the race. The way we look at him, yep, sneaky booty. Uh, it's so got you got to make you got to sort of, and it's and it's got also the thing that Zelong has is an SP yeah. over a lot of key runners here. One, Very strong four, SP. 10, 11, and nine, including even more, but they're the main ones in the in the market. It doesn't have an SP over Broadway and Fourth though. Broadway and Fourth. Like, this Broadway and Fourth SP twenty dollars, mm. twenty dollars. In a race you might have heard of called the Coolmore Stud Stakes, the Group One of twelve hundred metres down the Flemington Straight, Exceedance won it. It beat Bivouac. They want to give me eighteen dollars for it to win this race here. I have to bet. Yep. Have to bet hard each way. Obviously, it's eighteen dollar chance, no moral, mm. but fuck, oh, it's big odds. Anything else there? No. So I'm saying launch Seabrook, get set each way, Broadway and fourth in race seven, race six. All right, that's race five. Oh, whoa. Been a long day, punters. Race seven, Peter. Mm. Austr- Australasian Aust- Oaks. Australasian Oaks. It kind of makes you pronounce it a bit odd, doesn't it? A bit of an accent. Australasian Oaks, mate. Bit of the Austrian Oaks. Schweppes, Australasian Oaks. 2,000 metres, group one, set weight, three-year-old fillies. Apprentices cannot claim in this one, Peter, just by the way. It's a 400k race. Good prize money for the level of horse these are. Uh, Pacino gets the blinkers off. A horse that's promised a lot but sort of yet to deliver. No rider. Doubt it runs. Uh, Moonlight made some light gear changes. Spoke to Mitch Freeman on the Little Birdie pod this morning. If you want to hear his conversation, we talk in depth about this horse. Uh, Head to SEN and listen to it or just whatever. Just subscribe. Like, what are you doing otherwise? Um, Head to littlebirdiepod.com, subscribe, and you get our episode delivered to your inbox. Uh, Blinkers first time La Follet's Henry Dwyer, G. Cartwright. It's a deep race, isn't it? But I think probably the hardest part's getting the map right because really Sierra Sue, Asiago, they've shown some ability to sit on speed. Same with Nudge, Wings of Pastrami, but I wouldn't necessarily call any of them a leader. And it could be quite muddling early, I think it's fair to say. Yeah. Um, oh, well, yeah, mate. It's good, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just warms you right up. Gets you going. Gets I feel you. like I'm back on the job site. Yeah, good. <laughs> As you should. <laughs> um, Sorry to cut you off there. No, it's okay. Look, it's it's a really deep race. There's horses everywhere Four that you can make cases too, for. Yeah. It? Uh, the two I found, one is coming from Sydney, which is Toffee Tongue. It's just been very consistent, gets a very soft draw. It has started to just be specked away. It was a little bit of a, a bigger price. It's now into probably, I'd say, a right price in, a, in an open field. But the other one, we've already been on it for quite a while, Moonlight Made. Like, again, the price is just... It's, it's a wrong price. Yeah. You go yeah. first, though, then I'm going to... Oh, just again the splits it's been able to record the overall figures it looks suited stepping up to 2000 metres it's performed in arguably better races than this previously over a similar distance um, really I'm not sure the horse has done anything wrong it's just been perfectly set up by Mitch Friedman and looks ready yeah it's on track it's um, 
it it beat convincingly beat um, Vegas Jewel in the in a much stronger Kennedy Oaks at Flemington, like a proper Oaks. Yeah. It ran a figure then that's competitive in an Australasian Oaks historically. It's in a camp where Mitch is. Yeah, you know, he did time under Weir, who's a grand final trainer. Yep. This reeks of um, ready to jump out of the ground. It was home just about as good as a fair to remember. It was beaten point through the length SP, between the two. SP'd about the same. Yeah. You're getting $5 a horse that goes from um, Damien Oliver, who's flying, to John Allen, who's been in isolation for two weeks. Mm. Or Ben Mellon, who's obviously had a lot on his mind, to Zach Spain, who's probably just ridden the, first, the previous two winners. Yeah, hungry rider. I'm, I'm firm, pushing hard here. You go each way and you go each way hard. Yep. You get big odds, Moonlight made. It's huge odds. You don't need to have as much on this to win as much as you need to bet on... I, there's a plenty of like genuine chances in the race that mm. make sense to me. But Moonlight made should be 6 to $4, $5, I'd say. Yep. I haven't priced the race, one hundred percent. But but if a fair to remember is five dollars, I can't see how we're getting any more than six dollars. Moonlight made. Uh, the the odds they've gone up has made the decision for me. Uh, I think Salika, if it gets out to huge odds, I will nibble. And if don't tell the boss runs, I won't be losing on it. I will get yep. something out of it. Um, deep race map will be key. And then as you see, often in this race, if they walk or they go real fast, it looks a long time, it'll set up who's suited and who's not. Mm. I just think this horse is the closest thing to bulletproof versus the price we're getting offered to us. The other one at the current price, I'll have something on, again, might get uh, better on the day as well as Beauty Bolt. Which ran second or four, ran fourth in mm. the Kennedy Oaks. Yep. Yeah, they're, they're the two and that, for me. And that, that track wheel there that day, yeah. was that the sleety rain day? It was awful. It was. It was yeah, awful. Yeah. We, you, you, were, you almost gave up on life that day. Oh, no, no. I was loving it. I was running around in my serial killer jacket. It was Saturday was the day you almost gave up then. One of the days, like, the cold mist just got to you because you just refused to hide from it and it just wore you down. No, I think the computer also <laughs> got wore yeah, down from it. it my bad. phone broke and everything was great. <laughs> yeah, anyway. So, like, Moonlight Mage should handle the going... Mm. As, as should um, Beauty Bowl. I, I think Moonlight made each way is just an outstanding yeah. bit of wagering. Yep. Race 8. Race 8. Robert Sangster, 1200. Group 1, wait for age, fillers and mares. This is a another deep race. Very interesting speed map. Sunlight drawn 16. Should provide a bit of pace in the, into think, the race. You think but Sunlight and Bella Vella will cross? Yeah, you'd say so. I kind of have to. I don't think the, the wide draw is that bad. No, it's not, but there's every chance one of them gets stuck out three wide with a way game and Savatiano pushing up to hold prominent spots. And then there's just I think a when bit the biggest shins in racing knows what he's got to do, he gets it done. He'll get it Nine done. Nine times out of ten, the big Barun Voss just sort of does what he needs to a do. A great man. He can get a lot out of, out of a pony, old Barun Voss. Mm. Uh, Spanish Reef could go forward too. We've seen Bams on fire lead. Yep. Yep. Street Icon's got, sp- got some pace. Um, yeah, it's best. I think there's so we're agreeing there's good speed here. Yep. So obviously we've got no idea how the track's played and how heavy or not heavy it is. Which horses stand out to you as potential wagering opportunities here, Peter? I'm really looking at big prices here, and the couple that I've found, Mystery Love, if it gets a start, it won first start, really good splits, really good figures. It wasn't suited and still got the job done. But the one at 80 to 1 that I just need to have something on is Street Icon. Again, wasn't suited last start. The horse has just been recording some really good splits and sectionals, all prep. Ryan Hurdle's a decent Adelaide jock, or he's above average for sure. He's been in some really good form the last 50 rides. Gets gate three, should be able to put itself into the race and look at a really huge price. Wouldn't be surprised if it goes close. Yeah, we said on the deep dive that this yep. horse ran a group time last start. This is not a group one. Like, it's called a group one, but yeah. it's not a group. Like, it's a weak group one. Oh. It, it's, it's run times, benchmark figures, that win group one races. Indeed. It's very capable. I think the knock here is that it's drawn barrier three. I prefer it a bit more open space. I prefer it's drawn barrier eight. 
Well, part of the fun of the day is if it is really heavy and the truck's starting to get chopped up a little bit. You'll get yeah, sneak up the guts there. Yeah, right? exactly. You're confident when the... Obviously, we mark the horses one to follow. Are you confident it handles the going? It's hard to know. A couple of days out, it really depends on... I think well, it doesn't matter. Actually, well. no, it doesn't matter that price. Yep. It doesn't matter. I think another roughy that's well worth following here and betting on pretty heavily. Well, if you if you start betting, this needs to be a big winning result. It's out of the same race. Teleplay. Mm. Stop start sections last start. Like it sort of lost that momentum, four hundred to two hundred, and had to pick back up again. It's three from three on the soft, Peter. Mm. Oh. I love this horse. The stable gave it a big push on little birdie this morning. Yep. By the, the little the little snowman. Snowman. Angry little guy he is. Um, <laughs> BM's on fire. It's been up forever, but it's flying. And uh, another little birdie sort of push was embrace me. John Allen rides, but he suits this horse. Normally, like a horse like embrace me, who is losing Damien Oliver and getting John Allen, I'd be pretty um, harsh on that. Mm. But I, this is a, like, hold, 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 wind up and bang horse. That suits John Allen. Yep. There's no knock at the price, him riding for me. Uh, 42 days, a little freshen. I think you can back, teleplay, embrace me, and street icon here. And you still barely Not a huge stand for a big result. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a deep race. It, it's that sort of race, though, for mine. And just sort of be nervous about horses like Savatiano, and I'm excited. We've got that Sydney form and some mm. strong SPs. Well, that's it. I mean, Savatiano. Th- those Sydney figures could just be too good, to be honest. And yeah. they both should sit on speed or close to. Anything else? No, it's a fun card. Uh, do you have any best plays or best Best values? play, big time, is Race 5 C Brook. Yep. Uh, I'm really keen to bet. I will be betting. Um, we'll be betting before this show goes out. Seabrook. Um, this could be the last time we ever bet in Adelaide, though, to be honest. See how it goes. I'm shaky ground. <laughs> um, we'll be backing Broadway in fourth. Yep. I suggest you back it each way. I probably won't. Just I just don't do it. I just try and stick to the same win-only betting just to avoid growing myself up any more than I already am. I've got enough demons. Um, we'll be having a good bet, a, a bigger bet, slightly bigger bet at Moonlight Made. Mm-hmm. And I'll be having a Mitch Freeman all-up Broadway into um, Moonlight Made, and I'll be finishing the day by having smaller bets on Teleplay, Embrace Me, and Street Icon in, in the Robert Sangster. Very Peter, good. You? Um, my best is at Ascot. And I'll lay, I'll lay some light. Yeah, I don't think you'll be the only one there. Um, what what? Probably, like, she's, you could, if you could, you could lay it for three bucks now. Start fours. Yeah, might might get a little bit more. Anyway, your best is at Ascot, Peter. Race seven. Amelia's on fire. Chris Parnham for Simon Miller. Um, thought it wasn't suited at all. First start was very keen to follow it wherever it went. And here it is. Race seven over a thousand there at Ascot. That's my best. Best value. I'll head to Sydney. For oh, around the grounds. Punters, dribblers. A little bit of around the grounds. I've been doing a lot of that this morning. Um, race one at Kenzo threw it out a little birdie as well but Makrura just liked what it did there first start won its first start in uh, in the provincial track there and it comes to the city just recorded some good splits late I think it's a nice little speedy thing and for the Ma Eustace team and Rachel King like the setup for it you're a big Rachel King man I think with Rachel King you're getting really good consistent rides every start and you're getting a better price for it I said this on the on the radio this morning. Peter's flying. He's finding the right horses. Probably not pulling the trigger enough, but we're working on that. Um, yesterday was a clinic, and you saved me and my uh, smoking, my quitting smoking endeavours by finding that line. What was it? Star Clipper. Star Clipper. We've actually backed it the last two starts, Star twenty Clipper. to one, and then yeah, you know, it was about eight fifty nine, and then sent the message. And whoever that was in the crushed. chat room, what, what was his name? Pete Wong. Pete Wong. <laughs> Peter. Peter. 
If that thing had not got that photo and you'd crowed earlier in the chat room, you'd be sayonara, my man. You'd be gone. <laughs> Don't. No one go the early crow when horses are wear on. I wasn't sure if he had access to like the radio feed and he heard Mac and go, no. Star Glitter will get the photo. It was way too early. <laughs> Wasn't it? Oh, it? It was probably about 20 seconds too early. Like the cameraman's on it. The cameraman's on it. It's just like, oh. Unless he's on track. Peter, if you're on track, <laughs> then definitely get in touch because we can work something out. <laughs> but I don't think he was. No. No early crowing in the mailbag chat room or Ooh. you'll be gone. It, it, the first, it hasn't happened as yet, but you can imagine what would happen the first time. If it happens on the bull day, God forbid, like there will be people just getting torn limb from limb. There's going to be a lot of action. There's going to be a lot of action. Up to, 80, up to north of 80K, probably 90K yep. by the time this goes out. Yep. If you're not involved, $50 buys you a unit and you're in. Mm. You can buy up to 10 units if you want. Yep. But you're in. We're going to be streaming everything. So it's a constant. I don't understand how it's going to work, to be honest. So it's basically, it'll be on, on YouTube. Um, you'll have to access the link through the Little Birdie website. Obviously, it's an over 18 only event, so you have to go through and make sure you know, click the button, you're over 18. Um, that will be for subscribers. <coughs> uh, well, subscribers will also get access to the late mail that we're sending out via the mailbag app. So if you have purchased, please download the app, sign up using the email address that you bought the product with, bought the share with, yeah. because otherwise you're not going to get anything. It doesn't just magically happen. You actually need to download the app and sign up using it. Otherwise you, you cast. So, we're looking forward to uh, a big couple of days coming up next week. <laughs> and hopefully uh, by then, Scooty can improve his FIFA level because he just got touched up by LA Galaxy as PSG. <laughs> mind you. <laughs> mind you. How bad he going? Jack Dickens got knocked off 3-2 by yours truly. And then the angle finder himself, just off the two wheels, just knocked in yeah, a, I an early goal. Against him. So I want I beat you too, didn't I? No. I bet you 3-2, that was it. You started off... You only one game we played. Yeah. All right, well, let's finish this and we'll square that up. It, and it was, I'm going to go home and, put, and love my family. It was 1-0 up and then went down 3-1 and got a late consolation prize just to keep him sweet. But um, that's been the mailbag. Hope you enjoy it. If you know more about Adelaide Racing, feel free to contribute. And if we get it wrong and you think we've stepped outside of our zone, get into us. Get into us on Twitter, please. And if you ever want to drink coffee, don't come here. Because this is like dirty water. Hot, dirty water. To the brim, too. <laughs> Need a straw. A lot of it. That's not going to be any fun when that comes out. <laughs>